It's time for Ask the Mayor on KWBE with Beatrice Mayor Bob Sargent. Good morning, Mayor. How are you today? I'm good. Doug. I said Bob Sargent. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that one of these days. I meant Bob Morgan. You know what? I wasn't even going to correct you. It was okay. Yeah, but I could tell the look on your face that something was up, and it just dawned on me that. And I got it written down here, too. That's the worst thing about hey, it. Hey, we're, we're in that same age bracket. Yeah, we understand. I think there might be Prevagen time or something for me. I, there's something going on. But uh, anyway, Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan. I'm going to be looking at that all day now. She can call me Doug Gazinski or something. That would, that would be fine. It's going to bug you all day. It that? will, yeah. I'll be thinking about it through, well, you won't be here next week because we got county government on, but two weeks from now I'll be uh, don't worry about shaking it. or sweating bullets or something here. So <laughs> Anyway, moving on to our list of items today. Uh, a couple of the things, uh, Monday night, council meeting, one of the things that uh, you acted on was... Uh, the council acted on was the uh, design agreement on the street improvements associated with the uh, elementary school, uh, 33rd Street, Lincoln Street. Uh, kind of a different, uh, it takes a while to do the design before the construction actually begins. It's not quite matching up with, I know they want to have the school going in the fall of 24, I believe, but that's kind of the way it shook out uh, through the process, as I understand. That, that, that's how it did shake out. I mean, I think one of the hardest things is, you know, from a construction standpoint, when you're building the building, I think there was some a number of discussions that were taking place between the school, the architectural firm, and the engineering mm -hmm. firm about where the building sat. Um, it's really pretty hard to move forward on what you're going to do with the road until you actually know exactly where driveways are going to be, exactly where the building sits, so you have your setbacks and those type of things. And so, you know, the city engaged conversation with uh, Beatrice Public Schools early on, uh, but they ran into the problem of, of where that building sat. So that put us probably at least six months, if not a year, behind in discussions of how do we make this partnership work between the city and the school. And so what that means is is that it's going to be a challenge to get the roads done, but we will. Um, but they won't probably be done. If, if the school opens on time, you know, we won't have everything completed now because mm -hmm. it just takes that much time in the design process. I heard, uh, actually got a, a message from a property owner that kind of lives in that area where the improvements would be made, and they were a little bit concerned about, you know, how's this going to affect me getting in and out of my property? I'm assuming provisions are made for that you've got to pay attention to access things, and things absolutely like we, yeah. we will we uh we will and mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk to the property owners that would be affected mm -hmm. uh, i think one of the uh you know one of the things that uh really made us consider uh, or helped us consider going with a roundabout mm -hmm. was the flow of traffic so that residents can get in and out of their property you know, during that school period, because it's going to be a number of cars that go through there. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, we're always always aware, and we always want to try to be cognizant of of the 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 you know the residents that live there. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's not unusual where we have to take that into consideration. Um, one of the roads that's going to get done this summer, I think, is 13th Street. And so, when you think about it, that's going to be we have to plan that out very well too. Mm -hmm. because that you know country club subdivision has one way in and one way out and so we're going to have to maybe you know basically do part of the road and then the other part of the road mm -hmm. so that uh, people have access in and out of, of the neighborhood yeah back to the thing on the the 33rd in lincoln with the roundabout uh i can imagine you know if you went with just stop signs there at those times of the day when cars are arriving to bring students or taking them home at the end of the school day, I can imagine you'd be backed up for quite a while there in some cases. Absolutely. And, and you also have bus traffic. Yeah. And so, you know, just like every Thursday when I come down here, I always manage to get behind <laughs> two buses to stop at the railroad tracks. And so I'm, I know that I got to plan an extra two minutes or three minutes because that's, that, that's why they, they stop to be safe. But yeah. Yeah, the, the traffic was really what drove everything. Um, and going with JEO, who did the traffic study, uh, will actually probably cut a little time down on that design process because they've probably already got some ideas in their head of, of mm -hmm. well, they definitely have ideas in their head of where they want to go. Mm -hmm. One of the other maybe things that might have confused a few people was the cost of the uh, 
design study, I think some people were thinking, well, that's an additional cost. That's actually part of the cost you're already splitting with the school district, isn't it? Right. A couple of things there. Uh, first of all, it is already, it's bundled in in the estimate. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping that, you know, because this project was estimated in the future that we're going to have see some cost savings because there's always fluff in, mm -hmm. you know, estimates. Uh, so we'll, we'll be keeping our eye on that through the whole process. But I think there's also a good question of people who, uh, a gentleman came up and said, why wasn't it bid out? And professional services are not typically bid out. Mm -hmm. uh, work to be done, for instance, when the design is done and we put it out on the street for bids, we will take, again, the, most, the lowest, most reasonable bid mm -hmm. for that project. So it will be bid out. It's always kind of a limited number of design or consulting teams, too, that do this work. And I suppose familiarity with one, if you've had them before is an advantage to some extent it is i mean for us and you see it all the time at meetings olson and, and jeo mm -hmm. i mean those are the two that do most of the design work for the city mm -hmm. it's not because they're our favorite although we get along with them very well it really boils down to those are the two people that are really in that game in this area uh, and mm -hmm. do a good job uh, the part on Lincoln Street, not right next to the school, but sort of uh, west of uh, Christ Community Church there, if you can do improvements on that, is it just mainly curb there, or is it resurfacing? I didn't. There was some discussion about that, if that would be a possibility. I, mean, I think we're looking at how maybe we can maximize that section in there mm -hmm. with curb and gutter. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's one of those things we'll have to walk through the design process and see what that would do to cost. Okay. Well, the uh, practice of having four council members uh, support before you get an item on an agenda went by the boards by council vote on Monday night. Uh, council members were unanimous in the fact they want to just be able to bring an agenda item by themselves if they... Uh, well, there'll still be a process. Yeah. I mean, you know, ultimately, if, uh, you know, you look at everything... Um, the mayor certainly sets the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been very open with the, the council members and put a number of things on the agenda that council members wanted. Um, we're going to have to probably put some guiding principles together mm -hmm. to help them understand a few of the, the things that may or may not be able to go on the agenda. Um, I think we're also going to have to, you know, go through an understanding period of time that, as, as I said, Monday night, you know, we aren't going to put things on the agenda that are operational. Um, the city council is mainly oversight and policy making. And so we have a wonderful city administrator in Tobias, and we've got great department heads. And so when, you know, somebody calls about uh, trees impeding the road, mm -hmm. It really doesn't need to go on a city council agenda because we've got other things to deal with. So you talk to, you know, Jason Moore, you talk to the electric company, and they take a look at it and they decide how to get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we got some great professionals that work for us. You know, I've never, and just as a reporter, I've never had any trouble, like, you know, contacting any department head. If i got a question, I don't know something about, hey, what's going on in this part of town or that part, or why do you do things this way? And it seems like I've never had... Uh, any trouble getting an answer from anybody no and, and they all should be very open and uh, you know different councilmen do it different ways yeah. some of the councilmen reach out right to the department head some of the count some of the council members you know uh, take their concern to uh, Tobias and then Tobias takes it to the department heads but it all gets done yeah um, and it gets done according to the ordinances that we have of the city that's the hard part you know um, sometimes the answer is no because of the way the ordinances are. And in the, for instance, in this case, we repealed an ordinance. If that's one of the things that can happen, we can always do that. But it's really, really difficult sometimes <laughs> to say no, but sometimes you do have to say no. And, and mm -hmm. that, that's whatever businesses it is, the college too. There's sometimes I wanted to do something very badly for somebody that I knew, but the answer had to be no. Yeah. Uh, you have typically held periodically a work session on the uh, third or on not, fourth or fifth uh, Monday of the month depending if there's a fifth Monday you're kind of thinking about trying a new tra attack on that though I, I am um, you know 
The city council meetings are prescribed, again, by resolution or ordinance that it's the first and third Monday. Now, the time has been 7, and I don't know why it got set at 7, but that's the time. That, we could change that if we wanted. Right now, we're not going to. Um, but we always then had a, a fourth Monday that we would use for uh, a work session if we had some topics we just wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. We're kind of in a unique situation where we now have all of us that could actually meet at 6, and so that gives us the opportunity if we want to do a work session from 6 to 7, we certainly could on that first and third uh, Mondays. Um, sometimes, as you know, work sessions last 15 minutes, 30 minutes, they're typically sometimes shorter, mm -hmm. and so in a lot of ways it just kind of is more efficient, and it also gives us the opportunity we really need to to have two work sessions in a month. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to try it this summer, and if it doesn't work, we'll go back the old way. There was some concern about what happens if discussion runs too long, but you can start your regular council meeting later. You just can't start it earlier, as I understand. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. We're speaking with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan. I got it right this time. <laughs> we'll, we'll have more in a moment on Ask Ooh. the Mayor. Back on Ask the Mayor today with Mayor Bob Morgan as we move through our uh, topics for today. Uh, Monday night formalized the uh, amendment to the Fraternal Order of Police contract uh, to up hourly pay for uh, police officers, sergeants, and dispatchers. Had a nice uh, event, too, kind of along that same line, uh, some of the things they do on a day-to-day -day basis that maybe, you know, we hear about through the incidents, but we don't really kind of hear about what goes into what these officers do to protect the area uh, every day yeah. and sometimes maybe don't get the credit as much that the general public should should give them for what they do absolutely so, i mean it was really nice it was i thought it was you know uh chief hickman did a nice job mm -hmm. of bringing people forward and a number of awards were given out and, and commendations for uh how they handled uh what i'd say is kind of what a serious uh situation mm -hmm. uh a few months ago and uh you know, I think it really shows you the quality that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always said we've got quality in all our employees, and the police department's no different. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a number of dedicated officers that uh, do a good job on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. The contract change, to what degree do you think that may sort of, you know, maybe not put a stop to, but hinder people from maybe laterally going to another department because uh, you're always in competition. There's other departments that are facing the same thing across nebraska there's a limited pool of people to choose from and that kind of makes it a a buyer's market in a way i guess well <laughs> you know it really does it's really kind of a strange situation because you know um as you look around the area if you know all of a sudden you're doing the same thing for eight or ten or twelve dollars an hour more um mm -hmm. now you know I want to first preface that there's a lot of good officers on our force that are committed to Beatrice. Mm -hmm. But we had a cup, you know, there was five of them that decided there was, uh, well, one left, uh, law enforcement altogether, but the others, you know, for what various reasons, mainly pay, found an opportunity that they, they liked and, and they left. And so we hopefully will find some officers in that lateral transfer from other places that say, you know what? I want to come to Beatrice and and and, and uh, work for us. The new rates, both from Court of Industrial Relations and Market, do they where do they kind of place you at now? Are you kind of the mid area of cities your size? Are you on the upper side of that, or where does that stand? You know, with the Court of Industrial Relations, which is kind of guides the labor negotiations, um, you're supposed to be either you know the, the range of your what well, your your group is supposed to be between ninety eight percent and one hundred and two percent. One of the things we'll look at is that that rate, and we, when we renegotiate in twenty twenty four, my guess would be we're going to be on the upper end. Uh, what well, is this, this is a significant raise? But mm -hmm. one of the things you got to remember is that they don't necessarily compare um, law enforcement agencies in our geographic area. And so it's just, you know, the, the Court of Industrial Relations uses the guidelines of the group is made up of cities that are half the size and twice the size of Beatrice in the state of Nebraska. 
but not in the southeast area. And so, you know, we had to go out and take a look at what the southeast area was paying law enforcement mm -hmm. because that's where we were losing our officers. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, sometimes the Court of Industrial Relations and what the market is are two different things. So you have to look at that. So I would guess we're going to be a little higher, um, but we won't really take a look at that until probably uh, sometime, you know, in the summer of 24. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get a little fixated on the dollar amount of the pay, but the benefit side of it, how much does that factor into it and what you're offering right now for officers? Um, in this particular case, uh, it was uh, just a change in, in pay. Mm -hmm. uh, they still have their same full benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the city uh, health insurance is, is, is a great deal for our employees. And, uh, you know, I think the benefit package is really good. I think one of the things that we've seen, and it wasn't whether it was at the college or, or any place, is um, some of the younger people don't care about benefits as much as they do about the wage. And as we oh, get older, they find out. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, and I was probably that way once too. Uh, so, so sometimes, you know, when you advertise a position, you need to look a little deeper into what the benefits are, just the, not just the starting pay. Yeah. And so that's hard. Uh, that's hard. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the difference that we have. Especially in like retirement contributions and things, because as you get into your 40s, 50s, and you're thinking, hey, am I going to, where am I going to be at when I hit uh, 65, 70? So. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, at Southeast Community College, their retirement match is 9%. So if you put 9% away, they match 9%. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's like putting 18% yeah. percent away. I think a lot of people would take that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I mean, since when I was there, I wasn't complaining about it, but, you know. <laughs> but, but again, I, you know, I think even if, even if you're an employer and you're willing to match 4% and 4%, that's 8% or almost 10% of your salary put away for retirement. And you're right, you know, when I was 32, I didn't even think about that. And when yeah. I was 50, I probably didn't think about that. But... Then when I roll around being 55, I'm going, oh, <laughs> it is <laughs> important. And perked your ears up. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Um, before I take a break here, when I heard the word Moonraker, I thought this was one of these code names because sometimes uh, <laughs> when you talk about economic development uh, prospects and things, code things are used for confidentiality reasons, but that's the actual name of a company that's going to come here. It is. It is. And you're right. You know, when <clears throat> in the economic development world, when you're recruiting companies, uh, most of the companies don't want to be out about coming and, you know, what, 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 when they come to a community, they just want to do it basically in confidentiality. And so I think the past I've had with dealings with, you know, Engage and everybody else, you know, you come up with names for them. And, and, but no, Moonraker Mining is actually a, a uh, company who's coming to uh, Beatrice. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to build out the industrial park. And I guess for a long and short of it is I believe they are associated with cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing cryptocurrency companies pop up in a lot of smaller communities. Mm -hmm. And one of the benefits that they see in, in uh, Beatrice is our electrical rate. And one of the benefits that we see with this company is they use a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And what that means is they're going to buy a lot of energy from the city of Beatrice. And it will help us continue to keep our mm -hmm. electrical rates at, at the rate that, you know, again, we haven't had an electrical rate for since 2015. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a, a, a large user of electricity. And the question is, do we still have the capacity to provide that energy? And we do. So we have enough energy that we can satisfy this particular company. Um, I think it really is a place that is full of uh, computer banks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, you will, you know, it'll be in the industrial park. It wouldn't probably fit someplace else because there will be a little bit of noise. I know that's one, one councilman had a little bit of concern about that. But if you get that many computers in one place, you have to have a pretty good fan to cool them off and keep them mm -hmm. running. So as things go, um, if they continue to expand on that property, I could see where they might have some techs that would also be here. Um, but right now, it's mainly they're using a lot of our uh, electricity, and we'll be able to continue to offer reasonable electrical rates for everybody. 
If I remember right, they would be here, what, late summer or early fall? Or I think so. Somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Back to wrap up Ask the Mayor in just a moment. Back on Ask the Mayor with Mayor Bob Morgan today to uh, wrap up things here. I have just a few minutes left, so cover a lot of things in short order here. See the 11th Street resurfacing project going on. They were uh, drove by there, I think, early this morning, and their paving is going down. Yep. Well, they were a little bit held up early in the week because they had a spot of rain there, wouldn't you know? But uh, that seems to be going along pretty well. It's going really well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I want to... You know, I'm really appreciative of all the, the people that live on 11th Street. I mean, it's always a hassle when you have to do that. But when it's done, it's going to be well worth it. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit earlier than what uh, it was originally planned. But with the, as busy as everybody is that <laughs> does that, you got to take them when you can get them yeah. or it won't get done. Yeah. Not too far away. 2nd Street is two-way now. and or 8th Street is two-way now. I got this problem with reversing things this morning. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, 8th Street is two-way travel now rather than one-way southbound. I haven't seen any car crashes yet, so that's a good sign, but uh, there's always going to be an adjustment, and some are going to like it, and some won't like it, and you probably already heard some comments about it. There, but, uh, you know, there's, you know, as, as I think it was mentioned several times during the discussion, you'll still be able to use 8th Street, just drive one way and two-way. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a change, yeah. uh, and uh, you know something I'm going to have to get used to as well as everybody else. Yeah, I think one of the main things that I've heard is the stop at Eighth uh, and uh, Grant. Is Grant, it? yeah, that may take more adjustment than usual, but actually it could be a good thing because that was kind of a site problem there in terms of where the yeah. street jogs. The street yeah. jogs there, and, and by putting the four-way stop there, it actually added to the safety. Uh, of, of that street so mm-hmm. you know there's a number of winds that will come out of it who knows maybe a month from now we'll just all go back to the way we were and it'll be fine and <laughs> everybody will get along just fine but uh, yep. we'll see i guess but uh, nice to see uh city councilman rich kerr back uh, after his um, heart surgery and his I- stay in the hospital and uh, said a nice thing about your uh, fire and rescue department yep. which yep. i tend to agree with on that one yeah. oh absolutely yeah. you know it's one of those things that you know you don't really notice probably a lot of times until you need them yeah and uh rich has always been very good you know mm-hmm. about all of our city employees and uh yeah it was really good to see him back yeah. and he's mm-hmm. looking good yeah and uh you know i'm, I'm glad that everything went well for him mm-hmm. You're back to full complement of council members now, too. We all, are. All eight of them there. Yep. So. Uh, coming up Monday night, uh, Monday afternoon, 4 to 6, you have the uh, open house at the city auditor- municipal auditorium on the Court Street uh, corridor. Project. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they'll be back. Uh, I know they took some things under advisement. They'll probably have some storyboards set up. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's another shot for uh, the community to come out and take a look at what possibly could be a, a downtown revitalization plan for mm-hmm. uh, the city. You know, one of the things is it's not going to happen tomorrow, yeah. uh, but it is time to plan and, 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 you know, figure out how we can help downtown in their downtown mm-hmm. revitalization plan. Mm-hmm. After that uh, session and any other suggestions the public may have or input on that, when do you kind of expect it to come back to the council for whatever your next step would be? I, I want to say it'll be late July, early August would be my best guess. Mm-hmm. So, okay. um, again, see how well they get yeah. that done. Okay. Uh, one last uh, reminder, I guess, Big Blue Water Park, Splash Pad. We were talking about it last week. Yep. May 27th is the date, isn't it? That is exactly yeah. right. So, uh, you know, it's. I, I thought about today, you know, the... the <laughs> the sun comes up a lot earlier these days, and I thought, well, gee, you know, here we are, uh, and it's going to be summertime. Yeah. Uh, so Hopefully we get good weather on Memorial Day weekend. Sometimes that's a little iffy. but It, uh, it is, it but, you know, <laughs> when you're younger... It just doesn't seem to slow you down when you hit that cold water. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor, thanks for being with us again. Oh, Appreciate thank it. Thank you.